So our group is the Henderson Models, and our project is about Virginia Henderson. Um, Henderson explains in the nature of nursing that the role of a nurse is to get inside the patient's skin and supplement his strength, will, or knowledge according to his needs. So a little bit of background information on Virginia Henderson. She was born in 1897 in Kansas City, Missouri. She died in March 1996 at the age of 98. And she claimed that she did not create a theory, but rather, rather a definition. Um, some information on her professional background. From 1918 to 1921, she, was gradu she graduated from the Army School of Nursing in Washington, D.C. Um, sorry, guys. She then accepted a position as staff nurse with the Henry Street Visiting Nurse Service in New York. Um, in 1922, she taught nursing in North Holt Protestant Hospital in Virginia. In 1927, she entered Teachers College of Columbia University and received a degree in Bachelor of Science and Master's in Nursing Education. In 1929, teaching supervisor at Strong Memorial Hospital in New York. In 1930 to 1948, she returned to Teachers College as a faculty member and taught nursing there. From the 1950s to the 1980s, she researched uh, and created a theory that you were talking about. <laughs> um, these are some of the publications. Um, the principles, uh, the principles and practice of nursing. She helped co-author and co-edit the fourth edition, fifth edition, and sixth edition. Um, the nursing studies index. She worked alongside the Yale University's University in the 1950s. The basic principles of nursing care is a pamphlet that she created in 1960. The Nature of Nursing um, is a book that outlines her concept of nursing and its function. These are her accomplishments and awards that, re that she received over her um, lifetime. She earned more than nine honorary, honorary doctoral degrees and Christian Riemann Award. And there are others here. Um, and her legacy, her work is used in nursing education, practice, and research globally. Um, Hall Halloran wrote, Miss Virginia Avenel Henderson was to the 20th century as Florence Nightingale was to the 19th. So this is a list of um, some of the people that influenced her work on her theories. Annie Godrich was the dean of the Army School of Nursing that Henderson went to um, when she first started nursing. She inspired Henderson, um, but Henderson disagreed with the idea that nursing only existed to assist the practice of medicine. She thought it was more than that. Um, Carolyn Stackpole was her philosophy professor at Columbia University, where Henderson was a graduate student. Uh, she taught Henderson the significant of maintaining physiological balance there. Jean Broadhurst was her microbiology professor at Teachers College and instilled the importance of hygiene and asepsis to Virginia Henderson. Dr. Edward Thorndike conducted studies on human needs and was her psych professor. He taught um, Virginia that illness is more than a disease and that most human needs are not met in the hospital setting. Dr. George Deaver was a physicist at Bellevue Hospital and taught her that the goal of rehab is to restore a patient's independence. Bertha Harmer was a Canadian nurse who wrote the original textbook called The Textbook of the Principles and Practice of Nursing and had similar viewpoints as Virginia for the definition of nursing. Ida Orlando taught her the importance of the nurse-client relationship. Now we're going to go more into depth about Henderson's theory. So her theory was developed as part of the grand nursing theory based on the human needs. It was 
developed by her and derived from her practice and other education that she received. Her goal, as mentioned before, wasn't to develop a theory, but rather a definition of nursing that nurses could use to, in their practice. The theory emphasizes the importance of increasing the patient's independence so that once they're discharged from the hospital, they're able to carry on on their own. Her emphasis on basic human needs has led to further theory development about these needs as well and how nurses can incorporate those in their practice to help treat patients. So up here are the 14 components of her needs theory. They are breathe normally, eat and drink adequately, eliminate body waste, move and maintain desirable positions, sleep and rest, select suitable clothes, dress and undress, maintain body temperature within normal range by adjusting clothing and modifying the environment, keep the body clean and well-groomed and protect the integument, avoid dangers in the environment and avoid injuring others, communicate with others in expressing emotions, needs, fears, or opinions, worship according to one's faith, work in such a way that there is a sense of accomplishment, play or participate in various forms of recreation, and learn, discover, or satisfy the curiosity that leads to normal development and the health and use of the available health facilities. So Henderson developed her own definitions of the four meta paradigms of nursing. So for person, she defined it as the person must maintain physiological and emotional balance. The mind and body of the person are inseparable. The patient requires help toward independence. The patient and his family are a unit. And the patient's needs are encompassed by the 14 components of nursing that we just touched on. Her definition of health is that health is a quality of life. Health is basic to human functioning. Health requires independence and interdependence. Promotion of health is more important than the care of the sick, and individuals will achieve or maintain health if they have the necessary strength, will, or knowledge. Her definition of the environment, healthy individuals may be able to control their environment, but illness may interfere with that stability. Nurses should have safety education. Nurses should protect patients from mechanical injury. Nurses, nurses should minimize the chances of in injury through recommendations regarding construction of buildings, purchase of equipment, and maintenance. Doctors use nurses' observations and judgments upon which to base prescriptions for protective devices, and nurses must know about social customs and religious practices to assess dangers. Her definition of nursing, the nurse has a unique function to help well or sick individuals. The nurse functions as a member of a medical team. The nurse functions independently of the physician, but promotes his or her plan if there is um, a physician in attendance. Henderson stressed the nurse. Um, an example of this is the nurse midwife can function independently and must if he or she is the best prepared health worker in the situation. The nurse can and must diagnose and treat a situation if it demands it. The nurse is knowledgeable in both biological and social sciences. The nurse can assess basic human needs, and that the 14 components of nursing care encompass all possible functions of nursing. So Henderson's definition, um, her theory encompasses more of the nursing component. So her definition of nursing is that it's the unique function of the nurse to, is to assist the individual, sick or well, in the performance of those activities contributing to health or its recovery or to a peaceful death and that he would perform unaided if he had the necessary strength, will, or knowledge, and to do this in such a way as to help him gain independence as rapidly as possible. So the three major assumptions that she identified were that nurses care for a patient until a patient can care for him or herself. Nurses are willing to serve and will devote themselves to the patient day and night. And finally, nurses should be educated at the college level in science and arts. So now we're going to go over a case study that focuses on how, as a nurse, you can care for a client using Virginia Henderson's uh, needs theory. So the case study, Casey is a single mother and has some questions about and concerns about her and her baby's health. She contacts her local health unit to see if someone can come visit her in her home. 
You, the nurse, have been, have been sent to Casey's home to do an assessment on herself and the baby. The goal of nursing care would be to assist the baby as well as the baby's mother by helping them restore health and recovery with tasks that they would do for themselves if they were able, striving for independence as quickly as possible. In using Virginia Henderson's theory, we would look at the individual, in this case, the mother and the baby. We would see them as needing help and being able to perform one or all 14 components of needs. We would look at their environment as well. We're just going to go over uh, using that case study how you can how it incorporates all 14 components. Okay, so the first component is breathing normally. Uh, so there's a respiratory assessment uh, that needs to be completed to ensure proper breathing, the absence of pneumonia, and the absence of other respiratory illnesses. For eating and drinking adequately, the nurse should ensure that both the mother and the infant are receiving an adequate intake. So for instance, if the infant had diarrhea, the nurse should make sure that the infant is receiving uh, electrolytes within their uh, liquids, and you should also make sure that the mother is receiving proper electrolyte balance in the uh, liquid intake. So for eliminating, um, eliminate the body waste. So it's very important to monitor the duration of diarrhea in babies. Um, and we always want to ensure that the mothers aren't suffering from any elimination uh, problems either. Um, we also want to monitor babies for skin breakdown due to diarrhea and dehydration. For a move and maintain desirable position, the nurse should make sure that the infant is not resting in the same position for a long period of time. In order to prevent skin breakdown, frequent position changes are necessary. So sleep and rest. Um, so adequate uh, sleep and rest are essential for both the mother and the child. Um, if the mother is appears very tired, the nurse should instruct her to get on some sort of sleep cycle and to definitely take advantage of the time that the baby's resting to rest herself. So select suitable clothing, dress and undress. So the nurse should ensure that both the mother and the infant have uh, environment appropriate clothing. And if there is a lack of this attire, the mother should be provided with information on agencies where she can be provided with clothing that's appropriate for all seasons. Okay, so maintaining body temperature within a normal range by adjusting clothing and modifying the environment. So the way that the nurse can help in this situation would be to offer information to the mother on obtaining a air conditioner and see if there's any government services that would be able to uh, give some money towards that or cover um, the cost of an air conditioner. And in the meantime, while she's waiting for that, uh, she can encourage to, the nurse can encourage to open windows or use a fan. For keep the body clean and well-groomed and protect the integument, the nurse should assist the mother in bathing the infant and applying lotion if the infant's skin is too dry. The mother should also be taught the importance of cleanliness and the consequences of not protecting the skin. So if the infant did have diarrhea, uh, they should make sure that they're caring for the diaper area properly so that no uh, skin irritation occurs. Okay, so now we have avoiding dangers in the environment and avoiding injuries, um, or injuring others, I'm sorry. Um, so the nurse should educate the mother on dangers of heat exhaustion and the importance of a clean, uh, cool environment. So this is putting an emphasis on cleanliness and the risk for infectious diseases. Communicate with others and expressing emotions, needs, fears, and opinions. So the nurse should provide therapeutic communication for the mother Encourage her to seek outside assistance, so family therapy, social worker, or clergy. Regular scheduled doctors and pediatrician visits are also necessary. So worship according to one's faith. Um, so this is just highlighting the importance of faith and reminding the mother that she's never alone. Um, she can always turn to her God for strength and wisdom. Work in such a way that there's a sense of accomplishment. So the mother should be taught to feel a sense of accomplishment when completing everyday tasks such as cleaning the house, doing dishes, or taking care of the baby. If the mother is unemployed at the time, you can also provide her 
uh, to seek or encourage her to seek out employment as well. So these accomplishments help boost self-esteem and provide inner peace. Um, so we have player participate in various forms of recreation. So this is a very important component in human growth and development. Uh, so we want to encourage the mother to spend as much time as she can with her baby. Um, encourage the mother to take the baby for strolls or just interact with the child in fun ways. Um, not only is this a good way to provide recreation, it also helps uh, the bond between mother and baby. So the last component is learn, discover, or satisfy the curiosity that leads to normal development and help and help and use the available health facilities. So the nurse should provide the mother with a list of health facilities that would be of assistance to her and the child. If available, the nurse should be uh, should leave some pamphlets or information with the mother on uh, that so she can learn and read about uh, and sorry, so she can learn and read more about obtaining and maintaining a healthy life for both her and her child. And these are the references for our PowerPoint. So at this time, we would um, get everybody to go into their theorist groups so that we could do our critical thinking exercise, which is... So we have a word search that we are going to hand out for all the groups to do. So within the word search, there are questions. Um, so the, as a group, they need to work together to answer the questions and then they need to find it within the word search. We give each group roughly five to ten minutes to work on it and the group that finishes first would win a prize. Um, what they're going to take away from this is a kind of review of what we talked about in our presentation. There's some personal information about Virginia Henderson herself. There's uh, questions about her components that she talked about, the theories that she was a uh, part of, and just an all overview of everything about her. So we have an answer sheet for the uh, word search. So for each question, so the first question was Virginia Henderson was the recipient of the Christian Plank Award. So the word that they would have to look for is the Riemann. The second one was what is the component of Virginia Henderson's needs theory that relates to respirations? So you had to look for two words which were breathe normally. What me meta paradigm describes the patient and his family as a unit? So that meta paradigm was person. What month was Virginia Henderson born in? It was March. Henderson claims that she did not create a theory, but a blank. So she created a definition, as she said. Virginia Henderson's theory emphasizes the importance of increasing the patient's blank. So that one was independence. One of Virginia Henderson's components of her needs theory is to blank and blank adequately. So those blanks were eat and drink. Question eight was what, did, what city was Virginia Henderson born in? So Kansas City. What grand theory is Virginia Henderson part of? So there's three words that you had to look for, and that was human needs theory. And then the last question was, how many components of, are part of Virginia Henderson's needs theory? And the answer was 14. So that concluded our presentation and our critical thinking exercise.